In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Jesus was always faithful to his mission, even to the point of death. In this liturgy, let us pray that we may be strengthened to be faithful to him in all things. Lord Jesus, you bring the fire of God's love and mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to reconciliation and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love so that, loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In those days, the princesses said to the king, Jeremiah ought to be put to death. He is demoralizing the soldiers who are left in this city and all the people by speaking such things to them. He is not interested in the welfare of our people, but in their ruin. King Zedekiah answered, he is in your power, for the king could do nothing with them. So they took Jeremiah, threw him into the cistern of Prince Micaiah, which was in the quarters of the guard, letting him down with ropes. There was no water in the cistern, only mud, and Jeremiah sank into the mud. Ebed Melech, a court official, went there from the palace and said to him, my lord king, these men have been at fault in all they have done to the prophet Jeremiah. Casting him down into the cistern, he will die of famine on the spot, for there is no food in the city. Then the king ordered ebed Melech, the Cushite, to take three men along with him and draw the prophet Jeremiah out of the cistern before he should die. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, 
Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right of the throne of God. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners, in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not resisted to the point of shedding blood. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, today's Gospel is kind of totally opposite of the Jesus we know who speaks of joy, of love, of peace, forgiveness, usually things that are hopeful and positive. But today it's kind of a, a fire and brimstone speech or homily that he gives, literally. In reality, Jesus is giving some shock value to make a point. The point is, not everyone is going to accept what he is telling them. He didn't come to make division. He didn't come to cause any kind of hurt. But that's going to be the result of his message because some people won't be able to accept his message. Not everyone is going to accept what he's telling them. And that will be, there will be division. There will be division, there will be hatred, there will be all sorts of things. And that comes because of people who are not in tune with the Lord, who are not in tune with his own love, not in tune with his own message of mercy and forgiveness. So, you know, choosing to follow Jesus as we do and as we have been promised in baptism that, that we in, indeed are his disciples, that we will spread his good news of God's love. But choosing to follow Jesus will sometimes have repercussions, sometimes even among families, sometimes even in the church. And you know what? When there's division, when there's, there's hatred among people, the devil dances for joy. When he sees that, that people no longer follow the Prince of Peace, but their own, their own desires, and division comes, the devil loves it all. 
Even sometimes, you know, we see, you know, in, in families, uh, you know, when we're talking about vocations and the, the fact of how much we need so many new priests, we do, you know, we're, we're just so, so depleted here in the Diocese of Las Vegas. We're blessed with our seminarians, but there's not enough to cover those who will be retiring or, God forbid, those who get sick or die. We need more, and, and God is calling but sometimes the hearts just are not listening. And we have to be real careful with this too because sometimes in God calling somebody toward priesthood, um, there may be divisions even in the family. You know, we might have a, a parent who would say, you know what, this is my only child, my only son. I want to have grandkids. He shouldn't be a priest. Could cause division, huh? Even when the child may feel called by the Lord, feeling the tug of, who am I loyal to? So we have to be real careful, real careful that in this gospel today, that we follow Jesus' message of peace, that we, we be his disciples who are open to God's will, especially when that will is not what we would expect. That we be open to the Prince of Peace and Love, who desires that we live together in unity, that our community of faith here and, and all of us who watch us on television as well, we're all united at this time in the love of God. And it's up to us, what are we gonna do with what we celebrate here? How are we going to live this love of God beyond these four walls? How are we gonna let God live through us? So sometimes Christian ideals can be in conflict with society, but we choose the Lord. We choose life, we choose love. We choose the great, uh, uh, the great joy that comes from being a disciple even when sometimes it could get rough. May we then, in the midst of times of division in that, be people who are source of hope, unity, calling ourselves together to make sure that the Lord will indeed live through us and that we too will be his faithful disciples and live in his love. Amen. Amen. Together we profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God hears the cry of his faithful, and let us confidently place our needs in God's hands. That all members of the church truth faithful discipleship, no matter what its cost. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that world leaders have the courage to make the difficult choices necessary to lead their people to unity and lasting peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick, poor, and those who are suffering receive what they need from those who are faithful in discerning God's caring intent for others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each of us here may be wise in our judgments, faithful in our actions, and steadfast in faith, face of opposition. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, you inflame our hearts with passion for the saving work of your Son. Hear our prayers that we remain faithful. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, George Leo, our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her loving husband, with the blessed apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May our loving God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.